today, we will be uh, giving you a short update uh, from the Kubernetes CGUI and also some introduction to the project. Uh, I'm uh, Martin Maciaszczyk, I work at Kubernetes. I'm Sebastian Florek, and I also work at Kubernetes. And unfortunately, uh, Shumuto, uh, who is working at NEC, uh, couldn't join us today, but he's also one of the CGUI chairs. Uh, and uh, his part of the presentation is pre-recorded, so we will play it, and then we will continue with our part. Yes. Hello, everyone. I'm Shumuto from NEC. I was preparing as much as I could to see you there. I'm very sorry that I couldn't go to Valencia after all. So I'd like to talk the introduction section with video recording. Kubernetes dashboard is a general purpose uh, web view based UI for Kubernetes cluster. It allows users to manage applications running in the cluster and troubleshoot them, as well as manage the cluster itself. This project is managed in a repository on GitHub written here. The release is at the project's own timing and the current version is 2.5.1 that supports Kubernetes to 1.23.6. Uh, we are aiming to support the latest version of Kubernetes. I've already created a pull request for supporting Kubernetes version 1.24, so maybe a new version of dashboard has been released already. Kubernetes dashboard is packaged in one binary, but uh, it consists of the front end and the back end also to get and to visualize the metrics of the cluster uh, metrics server and the dashboard metrics scraper uh, needed the front end is written in typescript run in browser and it accesses the back end to get information for your kubernetes cluster the back end is written in Goran, running your cl Kubernetes cluster, and this accesses Kubernetes API server using Kubernetes Go modules and metrics server via dashboard metrics scraper. Dashboard metrics scraper is also managed by CGUI, so please ask us about this. But uh, please ask SIGWI uh, instrumentation about metrics server. There are several ways to try out the dashboard. The simplest way is to apply the manifest in the dashboard repository. We also provide a Helm chart, uh, which is also available. External access to the dashboard is not allowed by default uh, to prevent easy security incidents. So use kube control proxy or kube control port forward to access dashboard. This manifest has little uh, authority by default. So you need to add more permissions to show and operate various Kubernetes resources. You can use the sample user for the dashboard trial described in our documentation, but this has a lot of authority, so be careful when you use it. Dashboard users should familiarize themselves with Kubernetes RBAC and set appropriate permissions to protect on resources. We are also focusing on internationalization to improve the usability of end users. 
dashboard supports English by default. French, German, Japanese, Korean, and Chinese are supported for now. And Spanish is newly supported this year. Your language would be automatically selected based on browser settings. To show your language, uh, try to set your login on your browser. You can also change languages manually from the settings view on dashboard. We also welcome support for new languages. To add support for new languages, uh, first, organize your translation team. The dashboard maintenance transferred the authority to each translation team uh, to manage translations uh, because we cannot review each language. So each translation team can proceed with the translation work independently. Translation team for Kubernetes documentations, uh, such as kubernetes.io, may work with you. Uh, so try to contact uh, to Kubernetes docs something uh, channel on Slack. Then add the settings while looking out our documentation and run the uh, npm command on your development environment to create your translation file. The translation file will be created in the internationalization folder. Uh, please add your translation to this file. Uh, for your translation works, uh, you can all use a development container that the script that uh, scripts on our repository create. Finally, create pull requests uh, to Kubernetes dashboard repository. When the changes added into the front end, uh, your translation file would be changed also. So keep to watch our pull request labeled uh, language something and please update your translation file after the requests uh, merged. That's all from me. I hope to see you at the next KubeCon. Thank you, bye-bye. Kind of skip this part and go. Yeah, let me and do this. Okay. Okay. Um, so the next part of our talk is roadmap. So uh, we have recently uh, reached the state where we support most of the uh, Kubernetes resources. So the most important ones are displayed. You can get some information about them uh, using Kubernetes dashboard. But the problem that we are having right now is that the scalability and also performance in the biggest clusters is not that good. So our next steps that we are uh, going to take will be connected to that, to solving that problem. So first one is decoupling um, the container that we have right now, because current container is for the API and UI, and it's all in one. Then we also wanted to do styling improvements, implement new API architecture with refactored out layer. And we will go through all these steps to show uh, what we want to actually to achieve. So as I mentioned already, uh, the step that, that we are working at the moment is splitting API and UI of Kubernetes dashboard into two containers. Um, and a first container will be a Kubernetes dashboard UI with its own web server. It will be very light 
and it will be mostly for displaying the UI in the browser. And there will be a second uh, container which, with all the backend that we have extracted into it. And thanks to that, we can uh, scale it and also uh, it will be easier for us to manage it. And also for everyone to install and handle their Kubernetes dashboard deployments. Uh, we have uh, started soft code freeze. That means at the moment we are working mostly on splitting and changing the project architecture. Uh, but of course, bugs, security fixes, things like translations and updates to documentation uh, are allowed and we are uh, doing them. So the next step after we will finish what we are working at the moment, hopefully within a month or two, is to work on styling improvements. So right now it's possible in dashboards to apply uh, white labeling, your own styles, uh, but it's not possible yet to mount the custom themes into the container. So everything would have to be pre-compiled and we want to solve that problem by allowing uh, mounting custom themes into the uh, separated uh, UI container. Uh, and then the biggest change that we want to do, and I think Sebastian will start yeah, uh, so work. the next part after what Marcin mentioned uh, would be <coughs> sorry, implementing brand new API basically architecture. Uh, since the current one is also a big monolith and uh, scaling is more complex and handling new features from contributors uh, also is more complex for us uh, because of that. So we wanted to a bit change everything and introduce quite a new uh, approach to the API. So uh, after we will split dashboard UI, we will be starting to slowly working on the new API architecture. And the important part is that we will have API gateway that will stitch and connect all the parts. So we will also be able to slowly migrate to the new uh, architecture by like, dis um, disabling and connecting to the new endpoints that we'll uh, start uh, introducing. And also what the new thing that we would like to use is the GraphQL API. Uh, since we would like to offer a bit uh, better way to handle lib updates uh, in the dashboard. So right now it's mostly polling uh, in intervals and with the GraphQL API, we want to be able to make it like lib updates without this um, kind of uh, workarounds, let's say. Uh, we also want to introduce new out layer, uh, which means that we want this single micro service to be a single source of truth for us and to support OIDC, uh, logging into OIDCs. Uh, so for example, GitHub, Google, and stuff like that. It also, of course, depends how your Kubernetes API is configured, but we want to support all of that. Uh, and thanks to splitting our services and resource support to smaller microservices uh, that will actually connect it to each other, probably through gRPC. We are still um, figuring out uh, and trying to decide completely upon the whole architecture, but I think it will not change that much uh, based on this picture. So we can go next. Yeah, this is basically a plan, but uh, the decisions will be taken when we'll start uh, implementing that. Uh, yes, as, as I mentioned, I think the last one thing is that we want to use informers uh, for our microservices to connect to the Kubernetes API since they are uh, already, they already have the cache layer implemented uh, in them, and right now we do not have caching basically, which also puts a bigger pressure on the API server when there are bigger clusters involved. And thanks to that, uh, it should also put a little bit less stress on the API server. 
And the last thing, I think it will be also part of the migration of the API architecture is refactoring our authentication and authorization layer. Uh, it might also be connected to a slight refactoring of the dashboard UI uh, because we are thinking about some changes to maybe hide things that users do not have access to instead of showing error notifications. But this is uh, more of a like, user experience, but we are still trying to figure out uh, how we could improve that. Yeah. Yeah, so as you can see, these are mostly uh, changes toward better performance and better scalability. Uh, we also want to, with, when performing these changes, improve the tooling that we are using and also make the project like uh, better for all the contributors and perhaps more people were, will be willing to come in and help us with some issues and stuff. Uh, if it will be like with interesting technologies, so uh, we are we are looking for contributors, and uh, of course uh, we have issues labeled with a good first issue and help wanted. Uh, you can always come and uh, comment on that, and we will try to help you start to get started. We have also a CGI channel on Slack uh, where you can reach out to us and. Uh, yeah. I think that's it. And right now, if there are any questions, yeah, please yeah. go on. <laughs> if it's connected to our presentation or not. OK. Yeah, sure. Um, I was wondering, uh, this is the first time I'm actually hearing about CQI sure. um, from CIG Scheduling. Um, I was wondering what, what is in the API uh, layer. Why, why don't uh, you just connect to the API server? What, what is this uh, intermediate server offering? Um, basically, why we had to create our proxies API server uh, is because the Kubernetes API server uh, does not offer things like filtering, uh, pagination, and Search. Search. Uh, uh, filtering, filtering is search. Yeah, so filtering, filtering, pagination, and yeah, sorting so at the same time. If you want to do those things at, the things at the same time, you can't really do that with the pure API server, and you have to build something on top of that. Also, if you want uh, a bit more complex features, like find uh, resources that are connected to resources. For example, on the pods, uh, let's say details, you want to get um, all owner, uh, owners, events connected to those pods, um, and there are like, for example, storage classes and volumes. So all of that information that is connected to your resource, then uh, well, you need your API, you need your own logic to find those resources and to uh, return that to the uh, UI that can use that. Like yeah, and second thing is that you would have to fetch all the data into UI, so into the browser. So all the logic would happen into the in the browser. So the resource cons consumption would happen would be on the front end side, which is not the best because we want to move that to the back end to be able to scale it, to split it into containers. So that's why it should happen on the back end side. Exactly. Any other? Hello, um, one question regarding the OIDC feature you're implementing. Um, in the current dashboard, I've seen that uh, at the moment there's no uh, way of implementing uh, a lockout link. Mm -hmm. uh, will you include this in the new version? Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah. Um, we want to have like full support uh, of the those YDC features. Um, we were always um, hoping that the Kubernetes would offer a way to auto discover how the API server is configured. But since this is not really happening, then we will have to offer all those, let's say, um, duplicated parameters so that you can configure the dashboard the same way that API server is being authenticated. Because um, well, right now you can use this proxy server to um, reverse proxy to authenticate 
for the dashboard, but uh, it's definitely not the best way and probably not that user friendly. So we want to have full support for logout, login in, and handling whole authorization. Uh, so yeah. Okay. Thank you. Hello. Um, you said scalability is a topic for you, and um, I wanted to ask if you have any numbers on like how many how many namespaces or how many deployments um, where scalability or performance is an issue. No, no, no. Uh, we uh, like actually, don't have. Uh, there were some issues created by um, users uh, some time ago that were actually. Um, pointing out that for clusters with uh, an example 10,000 of pods uh, or like hundreds or more nodes then it might become harder to use dashboard uh, especially the, like the workloads view that has to download basically whole um, almost the whole cluster inside this single pod uh, which can take a lot of space uh, of course so uh, that's why we are aiming to split those into separate containers with services and have some caching so that you don't have to refetch over and over again. Yeah, um, but uh, we on our own do not have any kind of metrics that uh, are touching user clusters. So uh, we can only rely on the feedback of the users, so of the people. So the dashboard itself doesn't uh, do any kind of tracking analytics, or et cetera. Yeah. Okay, so I guess that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming. Have a nice day.